Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today's video we are going to talk about uh, <coughs> how to store API data in uh, SQL Server especially. Uh, we could store it in any database but uh, that's what we'll uh, try to do it in SQL Server. Now, <coughs> uh, storing API data in SQL Server, uh, typically it's used whenever we read some APIs in Node.js uh, we can process the data, we can uh, further store it in some kind of a database like Postgres, SQL Server, MySQL. So that's what we could do. Uh, this is a typical uh, kind of a requirement in any project where you need some data to be captured from an API, then further store it some staging or even some kind of a database uh, through Node.js. Uh, in this uh, video we are going to do it uh, within the SQL Server, a uh, very small uh, simple demonstration where I'll try to read some data from the API. This is the same API which I demonstrated in my previous video. If you have not seen my previous video regarding the excuse call to read the data from an API, uh, I'll post the link uh, within the description of this video. So let's try uh, to uh, how uh, let's try and see how we could uh, read the data uh, from an API in Node.js and we are going to store the same in SQL Server. So friends, we have a, uh, I have a one table in uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server over here and if I just see select start from users, uh, there's a very simple table I have which is having an ID uh, which is an uh, identity column like an auto incremented or a serial column you can call it and I have another column called as a username. Uh, this we are going to use to store some information which we will read it from the API and uh, the API which I'm going to use uh, for reading the data is the same JSON placeholder. Uh, this API I have demonstrated in my last video for which the description would be there uh, for that video. <coughs> the link for that uh, video would be there in the description uh, of this particular video. So uh, this just gives me an array of objects where you could see we have name and a username. So we'll try to use the username uh, key within every object to read it and then store it within the uh, SQL Server table, which we already have. That's the users table. So let's get started and see how we could do that. So the foremost thing what we need to do is to set up the connection uh, string for the SQL Server. Uh, now I'm going to demonstrate within the same stuff, but uh, this should not be done within the same file rather we should use uh, .env files or environmental variables as a best practice, but this is for a demonstration So I'm just going to use it over here So the first thing what I'm gonna use it uh, is the X use one because I'm going to make an X use call for the API so we'll say <coughs> require X use and then I'm gonna use uh, connects uh, to connect on to the uh, SQL server if you have not already installed connects you could install it the connects package and uh, I'm gonna supply some information out here so client is M a SQL so you should install if the MS SQL package is not installed and then finally the connection out there uh, which would be I'll be supplying server is equal to localhost that's my pc uh, user is equal to sa uh, that's the username what i'm trying to use uh, password which is one two three i've just kept it as one two three uh, though it's not a good practice and you should keep some strong passwords and even the use this information should be coming from an env rather than coming it from here and finally the database is uh, lovely which i have created uh, so that's my information which i need to connect to the sql server now the foremost thing is uh, we can put it into a function that's the best practice and the first thing is we need to read that stuff from the api so we'll just try to let's say const read data and insert into db so that's the function which I'm going to create and this function is not taking any parameter or anything. So I'll say I'm going to return new of promise because then first I'll make sure whether there was an error or the promise actually resolved or anything. So I'll be using for that purpose. So I'll pass on two parameters. One is the resolve, one is the reject 
and then <coughs> that's where my promise would be there now the foremost thing is to actually use an axios call so i'll say axios.get and then i'll paste that uh, complete api from which i want to use the data and then i'll say then which is my result and <coughs> now let's firstly see uh, whether we are able to get the result and i'll say let's say data now if you try to run this uh, no test.js so oops we have not called that so we need to call that function data and insert into db that's what it is so we'll call that and yes we get all the data in the form of an array so we could see that that looks fine to us so which is perfectly fine now the second step is to actually uh, store the data into uh, let's say sql server uh, table uh, which is in my case is the users table okay so now for that uh, what you could do is uh, because you have multiple rows uh, because it's in the form of an array so you could use a map function to actually like generate some kind of a data that's to be inserted so what i'll do here is i'll say data to be inserted i'll create a new variable and i'll say result dot data dot map and i'll say i'll just go on a column and uh, then what i'm gonna do over here is i'll close this one and then uh, we just need to do this thing uh, that is your which stuff you want to store it so i have a column called as username in my database so if you just go back so this is the column username and the table is users so that's where i want to go in for and then I want to use uh, which is column dot username. Now column dot username is this one because every column represents one object and I'm just going to pick up the property called as the username. So I'm going to pick it up and let's see before inserting uh, what exactly that gives to us. So we'll just say this is a test data and data to be inserted. So if we see because the array dot map actually returns you back a new array with all the elements that's what you manipulated so let's try understand and see how that stuff is so i'm just gonna close this i don't need this console.log because i want to check what kind of a data is there uh, that's now formulated so when i do that so if you see i have created an array of objects because data to be inserted is going to be an array because map function always return you an array and it has a username breadth this and so on all the data which it is reading it from the api so that makes perfect sense my data is ready uh, once the data is ready you could actually push it to the connects so i'll say connects then users is my table name insert data to be inserted multiple values then i'll say returning id and dot then so this is my id which i it, it is gonna return <coughs> and uh, once i'm in the then uh, here so once it is there firstly i'm gonna destroy connect start destroy so that the connection is closed and then finally I just need to use a resolve and I'll say pass on one. So resolve one means this promise has been completed. All the rows have been inserted. Everything looks good. So that kind of all looks fine to me. Now, because this uh, function returns a promise, so I should be able to get it in the form of a let. Uh, temp is equal to this. So temp dot then i'll say this is somewhere result and uh, if result is equal to one so i'll just simply say console.log uh, data was successfully 
inserted uh, else if there was something an issue I'm just gonna say uh, there was an error inserting data okay so that's how we just use that uh, promise to resolve and then based upon our condition we are just trying to uh, print out certain things so now before that let's go back check it out select start from users the table is empty now we'll try to run this no test.js and it says data was successfully inserted now let's go back over here and see whether the data was inserted so we'll just select start from users yes so we get all those 10 records which are there uh, which we read it from the <coughs> the api I just used one of the properties you could use some other information to populate in other columns so that's how you could do that uh, this is a better way of doing the things where you actually do the mapping of the data uh, put it into another array and then finally rather than using uh, connects into multiple for loops you pass on the array data to be inserted and it just gives you the ids for everyone which rows are generated i didn't print it out but if you print the id it would be actually an array of objects with ids equal to one two or whatever the ids are generated so i hope guys uh, that you would uh, like this video this is going to help you out in your daily uh, projects or some work uh, i'll be posting some other videos so stay tuned and have a good one thank you